Hello everybody, welcome, great to see you today. Have you noticed some of the only ways that can catch our attention as human being is some type of pain in our lives? And surely, boy, with all that's going on around us in this world, with this global pandemic and the lockdowns we had last year and what's going on with all the inflations and you know, we may get this jolt of awakening in our life during this weird, insane, crazy times that we are living in these days. But Jesus says, in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So let us have some hope today and know and trust in our sovereign God. Have you ever had a jolt of awakening in your life? Well, what motivated me to make this video for all of you was that I've been living in this house for over 29 years. And on the side of the house, there's a small street. And along the street island, there are 10 pine trees. And when I drive home from work, I can either go along this small street, go around towards my mailbox, or I normally go uh, on the street right in front of my house. But once in a while, I haven't gone to the street where they had the pine trees. And then suddenly, after 29 years, I recently noticed a big jolt of awakening as I was driving along that street. And what I come to notice that those pine trees, there were underlying roots that through time slowly grew and it came to surface on top of the street pavement. And those roots eventually cracked the street pavement and made big, huge lumps. There was this big root, like a big speed bump, even worse than a speed bump, way up high on the street, all cracked up. And then there are like three prongs of those roots up along. So when you're just driving down that road like you normally do, all of a sudden, boom, a big jolt of awakening I had. And then as you drive further along, there are more jolts from the other ongoing trees and their roots that sprouted up on top of the pavement. Wow, that was a rude awakening. And that was so harsh, that jolt that that wake-up call made me forced to pay attention to the road. And sometimes some of us may need a little wake-up call in our lives to wake us up from our slumber. Most of us tend to live on just an autopilot mode. We live through 90%, 95% of our subconscious mind. We drive the same way to work, we do our habitual things every day, our routines, our walks, our gyms, um, house chores, whatever it may be. It is just such a routine. But sometimes we make it these little curveballs that will just jolt us to awakening. And that is what I hope in this video that you may have a little awakening today in God's spirit and in His love. The common denominator I find that all the wake up calls that we may have is love. If we choose to repave our street pavement, let's say, and dig up the dirt, and it might get dirty and it's a process, but if we choose to repave it and take away that old cracked up street and resurface it with a brand new street pavement, Wow, your life can be aligned with beauty, love, and grace more than what you can imagine if you choose to, all in and through God, His Spirit, and the love who He is and the love He gives to each and every one of us, His children. For God calls you by your name. He knows your name, our Heavenly Father, and our Heavenly Father holds your hand throughout the journey of your personalized life. And let us be motivated to live this adventurous life in and through God's Spirit today. At this moment, I'd like to take a time to share with you this quote and a Bible verse, and then give you about five of my personal examples of my wake-up calls in my life. 
They are spiritual examples, relational examples, health scare examples, all these examples. So I hope you stay tuned to listen and as you get to know me also in my life. This quote is written by Brian Tracy and he says, Sometimes the bad things that happen in our lives put us directly on the path to the best things that will ever happen to us. So sometimes when we go through hard times, we're like, why God, me, it's not fair. Why is this happening to me? And we don't like any kind of pains or struggles or any kind of trials and tribulations. We may just want a nice, cozy, comfortable life. But that is no way for us to grow. God wants us to be transformed and grow up on the inside of who cre he created us to be. For God says, I knit you in your mother's womb. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he wants all of us to have and live this abundant life to the fullest. I'd like to share with you what it says in Romans 5, 3 through 5. And it says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Another translation is, not only so, but we also boast or brag or, or rejoice in our afflictions, sufferings, and tribulations. Some of us may just scratch our head and say, how in the world can I just brag about my sufferings in life? Sometimes if you, you are going through a hard time today right now, Challenge yourself to change your perception of that and see, hey, you know what? God is working something good on my life right now. I may not like it, but I am being challenged that God wants us to brag about our sufferings, our sufferings because he knows something good is going to come out at the end. And it says, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, patience, and perseverance Character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. How powerful is that? The hope of God's glory and his love poured out to us in and through his Holy Spirit. And once we choose to walk in our God-given journey path in life, be motivated like, wow, God, I get to live this good life in and through you. I get to experience who you are and to experience your love in my life and give it to other people as well. I get to go to work. I get to have a busy day. Instead of feeling like, oh man, I have to do this, I have to do that, it's such a drag. Let us turn it around to a blessing. We get to live this abundant life Jesus died to give to all of us in and through his glory. What an awesome privilege and honor that itself is. Well, one of my wake up calls is when I was 21 years old. You know, I was always growing up, I was pretty much always happy-go-lucky and I always tend to smile and, you know, that was pretty much my character. But somehow I got caught up into the business and the ways and the cultures of this world. And over time, for some reason, you know, growing up, I was not very self-aware of myself and I was very naive and somehow I just completely lost my joy. And I couldn't find myself to even force smile anymore. So bottom line, I felt that my heart had no more love in it. And I just scratched my head thinking, how in the world did I get like this? What in the world happened to me? And how can I get that love and joy back? You know, I was brought up as a Christian. We went to church growing up. So praise God, his love, his grace, his mercy came upon me when I took my first airplane ride. When I was 21, I went to visit my sisters. They went to um, Calvin College up in Michigan. And I was so excited. And boy, did God's spirit over and beyond spoke to me in volumes in so many different ways 
through the airplane ride, just looking down on the earth. And I was in awe on how tiny the houses look like and just seeing everything through God's perspective, just looking down on the world that how much he loved and cared for each and every one of us. And he spoke to me through the beautiful fall season up there and through his singing praise songs and just saying my last prayer when I was there. And God, I was just crying my eyes out, just very much repenting and saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me from all of my past sins growing up, this and that. The next day I felt like a big burden was lifted off my shoulder. I felt so happy, free, and I just couldn't help but just kept on smiling. Even when I came back from my Michigan trip, my husband at that time, he was my boyfriend, he said, boy, I noticed you've changed. What happened? So that was my spiritual awakening at 21. And then I promised God I would live the rest of my life for you. <laughs> so that was one of my wake up calls there. And then Another time, I had a wake-up call through the relationship with my mother. My mother always had, um, you know, I was just busy living my life and having fun going out. I didn't notice some of the strange behaviors when I was growing up. I just pretty much ignored it. And whenever I wonder, why is she acting like this? My father would just say, oh, it's menopause. Well, after some time and years went by, my father would have to go away to Korea. So he asked me, can you go to mom's house and put some of this medication into her um, coffee or her cereal, just sneak it in there because he was going to be gone and I didn't know he was doing that. So then I said, okay, and I just had my son, um, Jason, who was just a six month old baby at that time. Well, a very abrupt, strange behavior happened when I walked in and I told my mom, hey mom, I'm here. And she suddenly came out with no expression, no greeting, and she just picked up, turned around, picked up this large vase, threw it, smashed down, turned around, and walked back into her room. And my husband and I, Andy, looked at each other like, okay, what in the world happened? And that was a, my big jolt of awakening at that time. So I asked my father later, what in the world happened? That was such a crazy wake-up call for me. And that's when he told my mother, my mother had this mental illness. He had schizophrenia. She had schizophrenia. I was over and beyond blown away. And I felt that I just grieved her in my heart like I lost her. Physically, she is there. But mentally, she just checked out. And I was so sad and disheartened. I just like had a funeral in my heart for her at that time. But then thankfully, over time, my father did the research. He never gave up. Now he found the right dosage of medications, got her the treatment she needs. And now she is just as sweet as can be. 77 years old and both of my parents are just thriving in their life and marriage today. So that was my second wake up calls with my mother. The third one is with my marriage. I've been married now for over 30 years. And in the beginning stages of my marriage, let's say, I dated my husband for four and a half years. And in the very, from the get-go in the beginning, for some strange reason, I found that his whole family didn't like me. And I felt they judged me from the outside and not really took the time to get to know me or my heart as an individual. But I struggled with that. We were dating for four and a half years, and then we got married. And then I had to have my in-laws live with us about eight and a half years. And I thought, wow, God, I mean, I took many steps of faith at that time. But you can just imagine the number that it may have done, did to my self-esteem as a wife um, towards my husband, Andy, and it caused some friction in our marriage through time. But I'm not one to really be aware. I would sweep things under the rug. I do not like to confront things with people too much. And then over time, one, one day, I was watching this makeover show on TV by myself in the morning, doing my little arm exercises. And I had my little jolt of awakening. This lady on the makeover had her husband passed away and on her necklace she put the wedding ring and she wanted to get this makeover. And for some strange reason, that triggered something in me. When I saw that wedding ring on her necklace, 
you know, I realized, wow, my husband never wore his wedding ring. And the reason was because on his wedding finger, he has this big, huge tumor on there that it just, the ring does not fit in there. But then I thought, why couldn't he put the wedding ring on a necklace or anything? Anyways, I thought, wow, I got so emotional at that time, my little wake up call that I came to realize later that I didn't feel loved or cherished by him from day one and it just kept building up over time. Thank goodness for God's grace and having both of us in faith and God in the center of our relationship. And he has moved heaven and earth and to bring a lot of healing and restoration on my part in my marriage with Andy. And we are just thriving and I'm excited for over 30 years of marriage and beyond. God is so good. So that was my third wake up call. I had numerous other wake up calls, but I just wanted to condense five of them for you. And then maybe some, some of you can relate in one way or another with my stories. And then my fourth wake up call is when I had my bicycle accident, 2008. I went bike riding with my husband one day and I just rode really, really fast making a left turn because I panicked, there was a yellow light. So I rode really hard and fast as I can and then made a sudden left turn and there was some gutter on the street pavement that caused me to lose my balance and then without putting my foot down, my whole body weight crashed and landed on that street pavement. So I just hit my cheekbones, shoulders and legs, my clothes was all torn up, my, my bicycle was banged up, I was sitting there on the pavement with my head all shaking. It caused me to have a post-concussion syndrome for about 10 months, which completely rocked my world over and beyond. Challenged with all my cognitive skills, and I didn't have any energy to lift my arms, it would collapse, and I would talk slow and walk slow and do everything slow. It was a really crazy time in my life. But God knew what he was doing. And through that horrible, painful time, which catches our attention, right? Any kind of pains we go through, wow, you get that sudden jolt of awakening. And it's up to us what we choose to do with that. Are we going to sit down and be in that victim mentality mode or make excuses or just say, why me all the time? Or are we going to choose to repave your, pa your uh, street pavement? and dig under some underlying issues you may have that may cause those roots to come up to the surface that caused when I was driving those speed bumps that jolted away as I was driving along. Well, I chose to use this hidden gift that I found out after I hit my head. Maybe God has a sense of humor and it caused me to start writing my five devotional books. Who would have thought? God is so good. And then my fifth wake up call was suddenly I noticed this black spot on the back of my shoulder blades and I ignored it. But then over time, it just kind of get bigger and bigger. So I went to a dermatologist and sure enough, he says, you know, I'm a little suspicious with that. I need to take, get the test results and it won't come in after a week. He sent it out to San Francisco. So that week I thought, oh my gosh, is this cancerous? I'm 50 years old now, am I going to perhaps die soon? It was crazy. So that was my little wake up call. Thankfully, after a week and a half, um, it was a blood vessel tumor called uh, targetoid angiomo. And thank goodness it was not cancerous. And that actually motivated me to make a YouTube channel. So five years ago, I started my YouTube channel for all of you to make my weekly encouragements to hopefully give you some uplift, encouragement, some hope and some cheer in our daily lives. Because boy, do, don't we all need some type of encouragements in our lives? So those are my five jolts of awakenings. And I chose to use it all for the glory of good, to give us that hope and know that love is the common denominator that I chose to repave my pavement, my street pavement, and to just have that clean slate. And I hope and pray that you may choose love to live in the spirit of love in your life, because love is 
the thing that's going to energize you over and beyond and give you that supernatural power that you may need in your difficult marriage, in raising your children, in the difficult circumstances, challenging times you may have, any kind of health scares, and just this brutal times of this whole world that we're living in, the craziness of it all. God, he is up to something good, and only he knows the beginning and the end. Did you know that in the Bible, God promises over 500 words of promises given to all of us, his children, and it comes to pass. We may not see it now, but just trust and hope in his glory that it will come to pass, pass in your life. Let us just lift up our chin have that good attitude, and be motivated in the spirit of God's love. For God is love. And he wants all of us to represent the expression of who Jesus is to other people, to walk in the spirit of love. We all have our own God-given journey and path in life. Let's make it an adventurous life and not live in vain I know some of us, we all want to see the tangibles in life, the people around us, the materials, the cars, the houses, the works. But it's so hard sometimes, right? Faith is something that we do not see. Let us just have that spirit of faith today. Be motivated and encouraged with faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. At this time, I'd like to share with you 2 Corinthians, it says in the Bible. And, you know, when we go through those, on the another side of my street, they put in a new street pavement. So when I take my morning walks, I avoided it because when they dug up all the, the, the old street, all that dirt was there. So when cars pass by, that dust just goes on to me. And of course, I want to avoid all that dust. So going through any type of transformation in our lives, it can be dirty, dusty, ugly, it can choke us. Who wants to even bother going through that? But that is the only way we can grow as individuals, as children of God. So I'd like to share with you at this time, 2 Corinthians 17 through 18. And I encourage you, let us put a new street pavement, whatever underlying issues that of roots that is growing up, coming to the surface in your life, that all of a sudden you get this jolt of awakening, some type of a wake up call. Let us respond that call with obedience and willingness to do what is good and right, what God wants each and every one of us to do as believers in Christ. And it says in 2 Corinthians 17 through 18, it says, now the Lord is a spirit and where the spirit is, there is freedom. So where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Don't we all want to be in some type of freedom today? And we know who with unveiled faces reflect the glory of the Lord are being transformed into his image with intensifying glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Let us not be little toddlers in a grown-up body. No. Let us grow in our journey of life, walking along daily, every day in God's spirit and in and through his love. Remember, all my wake-up calls, the common denominator was love. Let us just embrace God's love today, for God is love. And I'd like to share with you that um, this Bible verse in 1 John 4, 16, it says, we have known and have believed that the love that God has for us and God is love. And those who remain in love remain in God and God remains in them. How beautiful is that? As we walk, we are just the expression of God's love and gosh, outpours his love and fills us up. Let us not resist God's love. Let us not reject God's love, but let us be open and willing in our daily lives 
to fully receive God's love and embrace his love today. Love is so powerful and it's going to energize you to do the good and right thing, which brings honor and glory to God. I'd like to share with you Romans 12, 2 at this time. And it says, and be not transformed, conformed, I'm, I'm sorry, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we wonder, what is a perfect will of God? What is a perfect will of God? It says in Thessalonians, to pray always, to give thanks, and to be joyful always. And we may scratch our head again. How can we be joyful in our tribulations, our afflictions in life? our challenges, but we can, because that is going to bring us, give us the character that we need as we grow and live in this world of ours, and that is going to give us the hope of glory, that joy. So let us just brag and rejoice in our tribulations today. Why? Because God is good, and He can't wait to fulfill and give you all of His good promises in the scriptures. Today, at this moment, I'd like to share with you recently, I was talking with one of my clients and she was expressing to me that joyfully, two of her daughters are in their 20s are soon going to be getting married. They have an upcoming wedding, one in December and the other one in January. So they're just one month apart. And the one in January has been dating her boyfriend for four years. And the one in December, she was planning originally to get married six months after her sister in January. But because of life circumstances and what's happening with the COVID and the shots and so many other variety of things, they urgently had to get married this year. So they chose December. Well, what happened was that they are so opposite as sisters from one another, just under two years apart. And I guess through time growing up, they just had underlying issues brewing up, just like my street pavement. With those trees there and those roots underneath, you do not see the root. It's hidden from the surface of the street. But over time, that root started creeping and just growing up and out. And then up to the surface, it cracked the street pavement, which made it evident for all of us drivers driving along the street to keep getting jolted or whiplashed. So it came to our attention. Well, these two weddings are coming to the attention of these two sisters. And now it is up to them to take on the choice. Are they going to repave the pavement and in love accept the weddings that is going to be happy? and be happy for one another? Or are they gonna have resentment and bitterness and unfairness and unforgiveness and animosity towards their sistership, sistership? And that is their choice. We all make our choices in life. And we can be in that victim mode. But I pray and encourage all of us when we are jolted with an awakening in our life, let us choose to be transformed, knowing that any kind of trials and afflictions and tribulations, God is doing something good because pain is the only way that we can change, that can get our attention somehow in some way.